Hello, I'm Ward Bell of IdeaBlade with another in a series of videos about the Tempire cocktail reference application. My good friend and colleague Marcel Good is the chief architect and principal maintainer of Cocktail, an open source framework for end-to-end -end development of XAML-based business applications. Marcel gave me a guided tour of the Tempire application and this series is the result. You're watching the Building Tempire episode in which we build Tempire cleanly from the downloaded bits. Tempire gets its external libraries via NuGet, including Cocktail, and we'll be looking for signs of success or trouble in the output window. Let's build Tempire. So what we're seeing here is what one gets after downloading a Cocktail, uh, it, uh, the entire zip file, and unzip it and then open up uh, the file structure. We see here the Tempire sample uh, that you can find under the trunk and in the samples folder. We'll see the typical kind of structure with uh, projects, uh, two solution files, there's a WPF version and a Silverlight version. Uh, most of the code base is shared. What's that flush thing, the flush.command? The flush.command is if you want to get back to where we are right now. So after you've built a few times Visual Studio generated your assemblies, a bunch of intermediate files, this flush command deletes all that. Uh, that's useful. It's very useful, yeah. In the background, we see the Tempire WPF solution open. Uh, we're going to do this walkthrough using the WPF uh, version. As I said, code base is mostly shared uh, between the two solutions, so it doesn't really matter which one you open. Uh, if we then drill into the solution and, for example, open the bootstrapper, we see some red uh, mm. in the uh, in the source file there. So we probably see red and squigglies all out the code we'll, base. We'll see that all uh, around, yeah, uh, throughout the entire code base. This is because we're missing some uh, dependencies. Mm. Uh, Cocktail and Calibre and Micro and uh, other third-party references are actually brought down through NuGet. Mm. We're not packaging them up in the zip file that you download uh, will let you download that directly from NuGet. But before you can do that, Microsoft made a change to the latest version of NuGet. You actually have to allow uh, such downloads. By default, it doesn't. Uh, there's some kind of security thing in case you would be pulling in libraries and when the uh company you work for doesn't like that. Yes, Microsoft says it's a security. Actually, they say it's a privacy uh, thing. Uh, some people say it's just to annoy them. Well, it's our reality. <laughs> yeah, that's the reality. Officially, it's a privacy issue. So to allow the build to happen and uh, bring all the packages down, we have to go to Tools, Library Package Manager, and the Package Manager settings. And then you'll notice that package restore section there in the middle, and you must have a checkbox uh, in front of the allow NuGet to download missing packages. That makes sense. If you have all that, then we are ready to build. Uh, and so let's do that. We'll build the solution. Okay, so the build succeeded. Uh, it looks like we didn't have any errors, and the first thing you notice uh, is the red is gone. Mm. So Visual Studio actually now finds all the, the dependencies uh, for the solution. Can we can we see how that happened? Is yes. We confirm. Stuff? So we want to confirm a few things in our output window. Uh, so let's scroll up here so we see the the top. You notice now there's successfully installed Entity Framework 4.2, successfully installed Cocktail.net 1. This is NuGet downloading the various packages. So as it goes through the solution and builds project by project, it checks whether the necessary packages are already downloaded, and if not, it goes ahead and downloads it for you. It only does this once. How did it know which packages uh, to look for? It knows that uh, from the packages config that's in each of the uh, project individual uh, projects. Right, each project will have uh, one of each those. Each project has one of those that lists the dependencies. Uh, that makes that makes sense. So, what else should we be looking for in here? 
we should see that post sharp uh, kicked in. Uh, so on this line, uh, we see that post sharp completed. Uh, it tells us how long you want to see this because Tempire uses code first mm. uh, in the domain model. If you don't see this, then there's a problem with post sharp, and that's another story. That's another Come story. Come see us about that later. Yes, but you won't be able to run uh. Tempire if you don't see the post sharp output. Well, uh, and the other thing is, you don't want to see any errors. You don't want to see any warnings. And no drips, no errors. No drips, no errors. All right. And so it looks like we're we're all good as far as the build is concerned. Be sure to catch the next episode in which we take a high-level tour of the Tempire solution structure before diving into the code in earnest. You'll find that video and much more at cocktail.ideablade.com.